Humanoid robot body parts explained from head to toe. Anatomy of a robot. In most cases, models of animals and insects are used to create robots, even though the original and most well-known robots are based on the human form. The majority of robots are based on other living organisms. Although state-of-the-art is far from being able to create humanoids with the same abilities as a person, companies like Boston Dynamics have created successful humanoids like Atlas. A robot can be compared to a computer on wheels because of its physical body, which is mobile, and its computational brain, which sets it apart from conventional machines. By applying forces to the robot's own body or its environment, the robot's body moves in some 2D or 3D space. The body can take on a variety of shapes, from a simple wheeled ground vehicle to a sophisticated humanoid robot. Most robots are typically built of metal or another hard material, with movable joints connecting rigid portions known as links at their places of articulation. Link is a rigid robot part frequently joined to other connections by joints. Joint, a joint that connects two robots. A robot's brain comprises one or more processors running software that analyzes data from its sensors and generates calculations that control its actuators. The processor, sensors, and actuators communicate with one another using wires or occasionally wireless technology. Each of these parts can be compared to a part of a biological system. Links are like bones. Joints are like, well, joints. Sensors, like, well, sensory organs actuators like muscles and wires like, well, nerves. The number of potential robot designs is limitless, just as millions of biological species with unique, occasionally bizarre, surface and interior features. Over time, as researchers develop new materials, fabrication techniques, circuits, computers, sensors, and actuation devices, the capabilities of robots have changed rapidly. It might be difficult to stay on top of the latest developments. Actuators and motion Speed, load-bearing capacity, precision, repeatability are attributes determined by the robot's drive system and power supply. Electric motors, DC servo motors, are used to position a robot that has an electrical drive. Although these robots can carry a limited amount of weight, they are accurate. Hydraulic cylinders, fluid pressure. A robot using a hydraulic drive system can move very large things, albeit it might not be very accurate. Pneumatic cylinders, air pressure. A pneumatically propelled robot is analogous to one with a hydraulic drive system. It is more flexible, but can bear less weight, less rigid to disturbing forces. McKibben Artificial Muscles – Air Pressure Although invented in the 1950s, the McKibben Artificial Muscle wasn't controllable until the 1990s. Computers and non-linear controls technology has greatly improved. These artificial muscles are similar to human muscles because they can only contract and not push. They naturally comply and have an extremely high payload to weight ratio. Piezoelectric materials. Piezoelectric materials can operate as actuators because they deflect when a voltage is applied. Due to the modest motion and forces, they are not very useful in robotics. On the other hand, when external forces deflect a piezoelectric material, it can be utilized as a sensor, detecting the resulting voltage. And effective robots. The tools attached to the robot's arms end and allow it to perform useful tasks are known as end effectors. For you to perform simple jobs, most robot manufacturers either do not include end effectors with their robots or a general purpose gripper. The end effectors typically need to be acquired or created independently. End effectors are also known as end of arm tooling, is typically coupled to the robot plate, following the final wrist joint, using a common mechanical interface. Each effectors need a power supply, frequently electric or pneumatic, just like robots. Grippers. The most frequent end effectors are grippers. They provide the robot with the equivalent of a thumb and the opposite finger, enabling it to grab and move small objects. Drills, grinding wheels, cutting wheels, and sanders are machine tools that can be used as robot end effectors. Measuring instruments. By deftly gliding the arm over the components while utilizing a measuring probe or gauge, instruments allow the robot to precisely measure parts. Laser and water jet cutters. Laser and water jet cutters are robot end effectors that shape cut, sheet metal, or fiberglass using intense laser beams or high-pressure, abrasive water jets. Welding torches. Robot end effectors, known as welding torches, allow robots to affix components together. The automotive sector makes extensive use of these end effectors. Spray painting tools. Automated spray painting is a practical use for robots in automobiles and other sectors. Tools for applying glue. 
automatic spot or trajectory gluing is a practical use for robots in the automotive industry and other sectors. Tool changes. To enable the robot to perform more jobs, certain robot systems have automatic tool changes. Methods for robot control. Computers, robots, and sensors are components of every robot control approach. Lead it through programming. The computer memorizes the motions, the joint locations, lengths, angles, to be played back during task execution. While the human operator physically takes the end effector and shows the robot exactly what motions to perform for a task. Educate in programming. Move the robot into the necessary work positions using a teach pendant. The computer will remember these configurations and replay them as the robot moves through its motions. By depressing the buttons on the teach pendant, a controller box, the human operator, can move the robot. For straightforward, unintelligent jobs, this kind of control is suitable. Offline programming. Offline programming is the process of planning and programming robot motions using computer software with lifelike images instead of robot hardware, such as iGrip. Autonomous. Without human input, autonomous robots are controlled by computers using sensor feedback. Intelligent robot control requires computer control. According to sensor feedback, the computer may use this control to send the robot to pre-programmed positions and even change its speed and direction as it moves. The computer can also communicate with other equipment to assist in directing the robot through its tasks. Teleoperation Human-directed motion is accomplished through teleoperation, which uses a joystick. Haptic interfaces are specialized joysticks that let the user experience what a robot feels. Telerobot a combination of autonomous and teleoperation control of robot systems is referred to as telerobotic control. Sensors on robots. Computer-controlled robots communicate using a range of sensors, which are compact electrical or electromechanical parts that enable the route to respond to its surroundings. The following describes a few typical sensors. Vision. With the aid of a computer-controlled camera, a vision system enables a robot to view its surroundings and modify its motion accordingly. Used frequently in electronics, assembly to precisely place pricey circuit chips through circuit board holes. Keep in mind that a computer controls the camera, which then sends signals to the robot based on what it observes. Voice Voice systems enable the use of voice instructions to operate robots. While the trainer needs to manage other items, this is helpful when training robots. Tactile Tactile sensors enable the robot to touch and feel objects. These sensors are employed in applications that measure data and interact gently with the environment. Force slash pressure sensors. Provide the robot a feel of the force and pressure being applied to the arm and the force's direction. These sensors detect distribution of loads on asymmetric geometry or assist the robot in self-alignment correction. It can also gauge moments or torques, which are forces that operate at a distance. It can be used in conjunction with haptic interfaces to enable teleoperation activities that require the human operator to feel the effects the robot has on the surroundings. Proximity Before the robot arm makes contact with items, proximity sensors enable the robots to detect the existence of objects that are quite close to the arm. These sensors are utilized to give the robot a way to avoid collisions. Limit switches To prevent collisions, limit switches may be set at the workspaces end of motion zones. When a move outside these zones is attempted, the robot will immediately stop or reverse its path. Various sensors include, the encoder measures the angle, angle or length is measured via potentiometer, LVDT gauges length, linear variable displacement transducer, deflection is measured via a strain gauge, a distance sensor uses ultrasonic waves, distance is measured through infrared sensors, and a presence detector uses light. Please use the space below to write your opinions while we continue to work on creating more videos like this. We would love to get your opinions on it. We have now concluded this video. We sincerely hope that you had fun watching the video. Please hit the subscribe button and like the video if you haven't already. Remember to click the bell symbol to ensure you never miss another update